Well, folks, it's official. USC is out of the damn CFP. The college football playoff is a no-go for them. They lost twice to Utah. Uh, you know, Utah is a great team. The problem with uh, Utah, they always win the non the, – they win the big games, but then they lose the non-big games. If you watched them earlier um, in the season, they should have beat Florida. There was no way they should have lost to that sorry-ass team. But they ended up doing that, which kind of threw off their season, and they didn't give them enough margin of error. But Utah is one of those teams that are perennially good. They come in, they beat your ass, and that's exactly what they did to USC. USC is a great team, but they're not physical. They're li- they're lacking the physicality, and you can see it on the television. So around the third quarter, I, you could see it. That they, USC wanted no more of Utah's physicality, with the exception of them knocking Cameron's Rising's helmet off. That was fantastic. I was hype about it. I was hoping that would be the catalyst for them to turn things around. But Utah quickly let them know, actually, no, that will not be your catalyst. And it continued to beat their ass. Like, you could see it on film. You could see it play after play. The game was over. The game was effectively over halfway through the third quarter. USC wanted no more of that. Caleb Williams, you know, he was injured. He was doing his best out there. I will say I think he's done enough to lock up the Heisman. It's not going to be as unanimous. I will say if he would have – if if Caleb Williams would have came out, had a decent game, and won the game, it, he may have been one of the highest voted Heismans ever. Like just flat out he's damn near unanimous Heisman. I still think he's going to win. I think he's put enough body of work there. Utah's just their boogeyman. Like, early in the year, they they beat their ass, and Utah beat their ass one more time. And it's a damn shame, you know, Utah has three losses, and then they won the Pac-12. But kiss the college football playoffs uh, goodbye. But, you know, they, they still got a lot of hope for the future. You know, if Caleb doesn't sit out next season, which, I mean, theoretically it could happen. These kids know they're going to be high in the draft and they may want to to basically protect their draft status. And there's nothing wrong with that. He might sit out. He may not want to play or he may want to play just sparingly, you know, a few games here and there. But especially if he wins the Heisman, if he wins, if Caleb wins the Heisman and comes back next year, what more is there to prove? Yeah, you can go, you know, try to go again for the national championship. But here, here's the thing. Same thing with you, with USC. You got to get to the dance. the The twelve team playoff doesn't start until twenty twenty four. So twenty twenty three season is still going to be the four team playoffs and that margin of error is super super small so they they barely were were at the cusp with one loss and now they are two losses so i know it's 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 tough on the usc faithful but i I think they're going to have a a way better team next year and uh again it's going to be it's going to be as much as caleb wants to go whether he plays um and wants to play and Maybe hopefully take a step back as far as uh, understand. There's nothing wrong with having personality. I love his personality, but we, you know, he's writing shit on his fingernails. It's a little bit too much. Look at me. But if he comes in with his mind right and focused, and I understand he's in L.A. and he has to be a star and all that other shit. But he gets his NIL money. He gets his his all that stuff. All he has to do is play football. If he's focused, really, really like laser focused. On that, oh my gosh, he's going to be a, a first-round draft pick. I, I've said it all throughout the season. He's been the best quarterback in college football, bar none. That You can name whoever you want, C.J. Stroud, um, uh, the kid from Florida, who's Anthony Richardson, who's been, um, you know, kind of in, out, kind of good. The, the, the kid in Texas, the Ewers kid, I, I – I haven't seen it, and you know, even Cameron Rising, he's he's a decent prospect, but none of I have not seen the jump out first round 
draft grade except with Caleb Williams. And he's undersized. He's 6'2", 6'3". And, and excuse me, let me not forget uh, Bryce Young in Alabama. But even then, Bryce is, is not jumped off the page this year. 100%, 1,000%. Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in the country. And uh, if that's being said, Max Duggins, you know, respect to you. He should win the Heisman. Um, and if he comes back next year and he really wants to to push, you know, to win a Heisman back-to-back, which rarely has happened. I think only Archie Griffin has done that in Ohio State. If he wants to do that, that could happen. Or if he wants to go for the national championship and has it on his mind, it's going to be a great one. But let's talk about Utah real quick. Utah, again, is one of those old-time teams. Again, they, they beat your ass, and that's what happens. That if you're not ready to match their physicality, if you're not ready to run the ball, keep them honest, and, and that was U, USC's downfall. Very early in the game, they were just like, we're just going to throw it. And I think that was such an issue. He Caleb is so talented, I get it. But if they're playing seven on seven, they're going to just – Expected, and that kind of takes away timing windows, especially if they guess the routes right from the wide receivers. And that's what you saw. And then they, you know, put in the blitz, and defensive linemen were winning on some of their their rushes, and that's problematic. So, if it, you have to run the ball enough to keep Utah honest, and you have to be physical with them, you know, knock some people's helmets off, and be able to match that, and that's. That's how you win. That's how Florida won. If you watch, go back earlier this year and watch that Florida game, they were prepared to match their physicality. It was damn near like an SEC game. And at the end, you know, Utah, again, should have won that game. They had no business losing that game. But one of the reasons why they lost is the Florida matched their physicality, were able to run the ball, and play their style of game. But if Utah wins that game and does not piss away some some games, they they are they are in the college football playoffs easily, and and have a good chance to win. They Utah could play in the SEC the way their team was constructed this year, no doubt about it. They kicked Texas A and M's ass. They would kick. They should have kicked Florida's ass. And that and that to me means you're competitive. And those big programs with all their recruiting, all their money would have to play Utah, and Utah is a fantastic team. So kudos to them, Pac-12 championship. Sorry to USC and all their faithful. I don't, Utah is going to go to the Rose Bowl. I'm not quite sure the bowl game USC is going to go to. But, you know, all eyes are going to be on the Heisman Trophy presentation in a few weeks. Again, if I had a vote, it would be uh, Caleb Williams.